We are now officially being recorded. Now it's time for me to mute myself. Oh, Jen, can I start the meeting since there's four of us? Oh, I can't hear you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so my name is Brianna and I'm calling this meeting to order as the co-chair. Governor Baker's extension of the March 12th order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I'm gonna call the October 21st, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 6.05 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group. At that time, you should say present um, to indicate that we can all hear each other. Uh, Ms. Walker. Here. Ms. Bowman. Here. Ms. Ferreira. Here. Ms. Pat. Um, our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moyston to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we'll be listening carefully. Oh, no hands. Um, I wanna take a couple of minutes to um, review the agenda. Oh, wait, I already said that. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> It's been a long day. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna quickly review the agenda and then we'll have time for members reports and then we'll get right into it. So the agenda for this evening's meeting is to talk about articles slash final communications and hopefully to put forward in a motion to approve the minutes. Um, the next agenda item will be to talk about the League of Women's Voters Racial Justice Task Force support. Um, then we'll talk about the CSWG report for part B. Um, We'll talk about uh, the CRESS implementation, the Resident Oversight Board, and then lastly, our successor group, the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee follow-up. Um, I wanna reserve this next couple of minutes for members' reports. Um, is there anybody that would like to share anything during this time? Okay, um, so we could get right into it with, um, see articles slash final communications so um, I'm hoping that everybody got a chance to review the article that um, Alicia and I sent to the group in regards to the youth center possibly being in the library and the cultural center as well I wanted to bring that to the group's attention just because um, people are reaching out and asking how we feel about it Marcy Sklo from the league reached out to see how the group is feeling about it and um, Alicia and I did put together a piece to respond to it, but we all obviously wanted to talk with everyone to see um, how everybody felt about it first. In our first report, I just wanna remind everyone, we were very vague on the, um, in the actual report about the youth center and the BIPOC cultural center. Um, I'm just gonna share a screen and pull it up really quickly because it's just one page. During our presentation, we were specific in the fact that we wanted this to be staffed and led by BIPOC individuals, but it doesn't say that in our report. So that's why I'm bringing it to the group to discuss. I'm just gonna share my screen now. Can you say that again, the last comment? Um, in our report, we just weren't specific about it. In our presentation, we said that we wanted it to be led and staffed by BIPOC individuals, but we didn't say that in our report. Can I make a comment? Yeah, of course. 
I thought we also talked about having um, a U, in addition to the youth center, within the youth center that we talked about having, um, forgot the word we called it, not youth council, but like a group of youth that um, will be providing input to staff. I remember we talked about that that there will be majority BIPOC youth. Does anybody remember that? I Am I here? Can people hear me? Oh, okay, good, okay. I kind of because, remember. I, because I specifically, I was the one who really has been pushing for youth center uh, led by BIPOC. It doesn't mean that they will only be for BIPOC, but, um, like for BIPOC youth to have active role in it more than anything else. I was the one who was pushing for that. So you know, if, we, if we missed it, we can still, it's not late you know, for our presentation on Monday. But thank you for bringing that up, Brianna. I mean, I yeah. absolutely think anything run by the youth, I mean, anything for the youth should have youth voices involved. Exactly. Because personally, like, as an adult and as a youth, a person who was a youth in this community, like one of the most annoying things is to have, like, I don't wanna speak for the youth. And I don't, when I was a youth, I didn't like when adults spoke for me. Oh, we're gonna do this for you. Did I say I want that? Like, that's just kind of my, I don't, yeah. It, we really need to be hearing from the youth and what they need, what they want. like. They want to be doing, you know, cultural trips. Then we need to, we need to like be doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I think of a youth center, I think of things that would allow oh, for like. Are you kidding me right now? I am literally talking. Walk away, please. Um, I think of things like, um, like like college tours and things like that, where it's like some of these, these are things that some of these students would love to do, like, but can't because either parents work schedules or whatever, but I mean, I'm getting way ahead of myself, but, I, but I'm just thinking, I feel like it really needs to be run by youth, but got, you know, but like how the adults are just there to help implement their needs. If that makes any sense. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, like Ms. Pat, when you were talking, I don't think we spent a lot of time kind of discussing that, but obviously, you know, I'm a big um, proponent of that, right? It being kind of youth-led, BIPOC um, uh, leadership and, and youth BIPOC-led, you know, because I, I'm also part of the Julius Ford Harriet Tubman Healthy Living uh, community, which is intergenerational, but our youth are the, the leaders of that group, you know, and so they're the ones that kind of provide what what set our agenda they're the ones that say what we should be doing whenever we have meetings it's always a youth and and an adult they're just to kind of guide but it's usually the youth that runs the meetings all of that you know so obviously i mean that's something that's you know critical and very important any youth organization is for it to be you know youth led but with the adults there to guide and help and help make whatever they want to happen happen right because a lot of times they don't know how to navigate some of the the obviously the the how could, how, the, the white <laughs> systemic issues that are present and so you know a lot of times we need adults to kind of help navigate that um, but so that's one so obviously if we need to include that somewhere I think we should um, but in terms of what um, Brianna was talking about, I, I definitely think that we did discuss it, even if we didn't put it in our report. I think it's important for us to have uh, a place that is a youth, uh, um, you know, a place for the youth, you know, for the youth center that's for, you know, you know, BIPOC led for, for, you know, BIPOC youth, right? And obviously all youth can use it, but obviously hopefully majority BIPOC youth. And, um, but it needs to be a place separate you know, and it has to be BIPOC-led. I mean, so even though I, I, I get what 
folks are, are trying to do in terms of ha having it in the library. I guess the library is going to be going through renovations and all that, but that's not going to be BIPOC led. You know, it's going to have a whole different type of way of being and culture and everything. And so for me, I think it would be critical for us to have our own space, right? For BIPOC to have their own space and to have it be with BIPOC leadership. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat? So if I may, now I'm remembering very, very clearly. That's part of the reason I recruited uh, Darius Cage. He provided a lot, of, a lot of input to me, even though he's not always at the meeting because of his busy school and sports schedule, but I do reach out to him for feedback. I remember when we're doing um, our budget, I don't know if, uh, Jennifer can pull that up for, for us. I remember saying BIPOC something led. I also remember when we're checking off priorities, how, you know, what we want, uh, the document that um, Mr. Ross put together, I remember, you know, emphasizing BIPOC led. What I meant by that, two things. One, majority of um, BIPOC youth led group in addition to their staff, has to be BIPOC. I wasn't shy, shy about that. That's something I push really, really hard. But I can understand, you know, we didn't, you know, include it. It doesn't mean that it's only BIPOC youth center. That's not what we're saying. It will be youth center for all youth in Amis. Thank you. I think one of the, um, oh, sorry, was someone before me? Oh, I think Mr. Vernon Jones had his hand up. Okay, can I go ahead? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so I don't know who, somebody sent me something about the whole situation at the library and how they're trying to do a youth center there and wanted to like, you know, they, I don't know, they sent me some article and I was like, ah, that's cool. But like, the reality is that the Jones Library is not run by BIPOC community. And I don't know, I don't, I don't have confidence that they would be able to put, to draw in the BIPOC community to the library. Like I know that even when I've gone to the library with my kids, like it was always a stretch to find books with people of color. And it was always a stretch to, like, it was always a stretch to find things that represented my family as far as like being people of color and being, you know, my family being, you know, having, you know, people who are, you know, you know, come from different walks of life as far as like relationship wise and so on and so forth. Anyways, my point being is that it just, the article I read just feels like another attempt to, um, I, how do I say this? Um, it's kind of like another attempt by do-gooders. We wanna do something good for the BIPOC community, but we're not really gonna totally involve them. And if anybody makes too much of a noise, then we might just shut it down. Like it just, that's just what this town does. Like as soon as the noise gets a little too loud for the BIPOC community, they just shut it down. It's, that's how it's always been. Um, so I just, I don't, I'm, I just, I don't have, yeah, it's just, it just feels like a do-gooder move. And like, and in this article, they were very much like, oh, we want to do, you know, we want the BIPOC community to, you know, we want to get people from the BIPOC community to be part of this and, and, you know, whatnot. If I can find it, I'll send it, to, I'll, I'll share it. I can share content, right? I'll share it if I find it, but I was just like, I was like, it's, it, it all feels nice. You know, it's all, all the words are there type thing. I just don't have any confidence in, I don't have any confidence in the community here. So I, I and yeah, so I just don't know, but like, 
that was like that I just want to mention that because that was what this article was saying that that was their intent is to involve the BIPOC community so that the BIPOC community would be part of this youth center and part of making this youth center happen to me happen but the other thing that concerns me is that occasionally there's going to be like we have older youth we have teenagers we don't hold the teenagers like teenagers don't want to go to a, a teen center a because they don't hold like do things in the evenings. Like a lot of these centers don't ha hold events for teens in the evenings where like teens can go hang out or have a dance or have, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I don't know. I think some things nowadays really, but um, I guess on TikTok it is. But I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not talking anymore, sorry. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Ferreira, and then Ms. Moisten. Yeah, in our report last May, we were very clear that this had to be BIPOC led. And it even mentions a space for BIPOC youth voices. That's in our report. And, you know, the library is a white space. The library is going to continue to be a white space. And we don't want a BIPOC led youth center if you have to walk through a white space to get to it. Thank you. That's and, where I, that's, yes, that, Russ, right. And the youth center by nature needs to be a place where you can make noise. You know, as somebody said, we, we probably need a basketball court there as well. But the library, you know, I mean, even if it's in a separate space, they're not going to want a lot of noise. Um, so I think it's a bad match. I mean, I'm, I'm glad somebody wants the support that we have it, but I don't think the library is a good match for it. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Moisten. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of say and add to what everyone is saying, um, you know, and to Sheena and Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Pat already kind of hit the, the nail on the head, which is, you know, for me, when I go to the library, it is, it's a white space, you know, you, you feel othered. Um, you know, when I go with my, with my kids, with my son, it's just like, probably we're like the only ones there, you know? So for me, it's not about now using the youth center as of the BIPOC, you know, the, the BIPOC youth within this youth center to now come fill those spaces. No, you know what I'm saying? Because it's still going to be a white space, you know? Now, the library should though, they need to do a lot better <laughs> to make sure that that space is multicultural, is inclusive, is diverse, is, is comfortable, you know, for everyone now, but that's the, the work they need to do and they cannot use the BIPOC, you know, youth and the youth center to now fill that void. And I think that that's what's happening. It's like a round peg and now you're trying to put in that square and it's not gonna fit, you know? The youth uh, em empowerment um, center needs to be its own, a BIPOC led, BIPOC youth as, as leaders, you know, and things like that. that's what it needs to be, you know? And then the, the library, yes, you need to have a more, you know, inclusive space, yes you do, but you need to figure that out and you need to bring in the leadership, the BIPOC leadership and the BIPOC youth and others to contribute and be there and create that, that inclusive space in the library, but you can't use this to accomplish that. So um, that's my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, Ms. Moisten and then Ms. Bowman. Oh, I didn't realize I was unmuted when I cleared my throat, excuse me. So um, a couple of things. One is, so the library with the new building, and if you know people who wanna be involved in the new library building, you know, to have that voice, please have them fill out a citizen, a community activity form, because, you know, we did kind of, I, there was a call for folks that aren't our repeat offenders, I'll call them to, to be, to participate in the library building trust committee that's going to happen. And that's not the right name. Also, the library has made an initiative to make it seem to, I mean, the goal from the library's perspective was to make it a more welcoming, inclusive space, right? And at the same time, they are having a youth center, regardless of whether it's it, it's inclusive of this or not, right? Because they already have a youth space and a, and a youth section at the library. So that is going to continue to be th what it is over there. And then I spoke with people from the library, and I'm not by any means saying that I agree with anything that was said. Their thought process was it can be run by whomever needs to run it, and it could be in addition to the 
like added on in the backspace of the library. And so I don't necessarily agree with any of that because it kind of seems like a weird way of getting the library to pass, right? And so we don't want that. We don't want to be used like that. It just doesn't feel good. Do you know what I mean? And so, yes, it does need to be that separate space, but I just wanted to let you guys know at the same time that they are going to have their own youth, that, that the library will have a youth center. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be inclusive of the of what your recommendation is and that um, they are making, in theory, an effort to make that a more welcoming space. I've had conversations and I will say as a BIPOC mom who went in there as a single lower income person, and not only did I have my three boys, but I always had other kids with me and never felt good in that space, right? Never felt like it was for us. Maybe we were too loud, maybe we were too rough or whatever the case is. And so I've explained that I'm just not simply the only person that feels that way. Um, and so I know that they are trying to make a separate push outside of everything else on their own to have it be a more inclusive, warm space. I don't mean warm, I don't know where that came from, but a more inclusive space. So I just wanted you guys to know that those two things are still going to be happening, even if the recommendations move over here from our perspective, and that they don't have to, they, there's no reason for them to necessarily be together. I know that somebody had pushed that out there, but again, that doesn't feel like a good, it doesn't feel organic, if that makes sense, or natural to have it run in the way that it's being proposed. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you, Ms. Moisten. Uh, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Pat. Okay, so I found a thing that was, um, that, can you still hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. I just, no, I just closed my window, so I didn't know if it cut me off. Um, so I found the thing that I was sent along. Um, so it was said the trustees of the Jones Library publicly announced their intention to renovate and expand the library be um, expand library be developed in such a way to assure all members of the Amherst community are and feel welcome and that all members of the community feel that the library belongs to them. Such intention would be realized in first instance through the work of the building community, the building committee, which, <clears throat> excuse me, which work should be guided by a commitment to anti-racism in and include the perspectives of marginalized groups. That committee <clears throat> work must involve an examination of the way different communities in our town use and experience library space and the iconography of the representations contained in the library. So that was a little blurb that I got. And then I, um, you know, and then I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, that's cool and all, but it just still seems like, um, it still just feels like it left, you know, it kind of left me blank. It kind of left me being like, okay, so how are you going to get these people to talk to you about what you, what they need and, you know, what they, how they feel about being in the library? How are you going to get these people to contribute? Like you'll get a few things. We're going to have a little, like, I don't know. It's, you know, it's like Black History Month. We have a little shelf of stuff. <laughs> sorry. I'm no. sorry. Um, the, but that's what it feels like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like literally what Target did. They just, they were like, oh, it's Black History Month. Let's put a little tiny section of, you know, products by Black people. And then, you know, oh, it's, you know, Latinx History Month. So we're going to put a little, you know, you know, little section, but then the Black History you know, everything from, you know, anything that has to do with black people is like disappeared and you can't barely find it. You know, it, it, it's, that's what it feels like. That's just what it feels like. Um, so yeah, that's my little two bit. Thank you, Ms. Bowman, uh, Ms. Pat, and then Mr. Vernon Jones, and then Ms. Walker. Okay, let me break this down. Follow the money. So the supporters of Jones Library the people behind it is bad. Land lords, land owners. Okay. 
the more you, you know, you bring people to downtown is benefiting their property. When we talk about business people, there are two categories. We have the small restaurant and shop owners. They're not benefiting the most of the time. They pay hell for rent, commercial rent there. The project is very expensive. Who is going to benefit for, from it? White contractors, okay? We have climate action, uh, climate group telling us that it's not, you know, uh, destroying the uh, one part of the building to build a new one. It's not good. It's, it's, you know, they're not listening to that. It's too costly. The town couldn't even fully fund Crest program. All of a sudden, they want everybody to, you know, agree to 36 whopping million dollars. The neighboring town, hardly where I do business, had 15 million to do three projects. Very impressive. Okay. And so somebody came up with the idea that they can use BIPOC people to go vote November 2nd. So if we tell them that we're going to have youth center and multicultural, they're fools, they will, you know, they will just go vote, exploiting us. We're not stupid. Okay, so that's what is going on right there. If they're going to do their own thing in the library, that's where you know white supremacy you know lies. Because if they feel if they're ignoring what we're saying, some section of the community saying we don't think that youth center belongs to the library, and they go ahead to put it anyway. How that how can there be any um, unity or repair in this town, meaning they're ignoring what we're saying. Do not put youth center in the library. If they want to go ahead to do it, that's a big problem right there. It's like they're trying to um, disfranchise a section of this town. We need only one teen center. And that one teen center has to be led by BIPOC, period. Closed, case closed. That's where it's going to be. And so, people need to do their homework. On you know when they vote on November second, or people who are voting early. If you you know want the town to spend thirty six million, go ahead and vote. Yes, but if you feel all these factors that you don't want to be used as a bipoc person, you're part of climate group. You're part of people who feel that other programs have priorities, then vote no, because I'm voting no that day. Thank you. And I, I welcome people reaching out. I got some people have been reaching out to me. In fact, I'll be meeting with one of the library trustees this weekend. I'm a very positive person. I can negotiate, I can compromise, but you have to give me something to negotiate. If you're going to go ahead and do team center at the library, what is there for me to negotiate? One, you need to fully fund Crest. We need uh, um, BIPOC-led youth center. We need BIPOC-led cultural center. Not that I'm going to still support the 36 million, but if you want us to negotiate on the table, we have to negotiate on equal footing, period. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Walker, and then I have a quick comment. Well, it seems to me that we're pretty much on the same page that the BIPOC led youth center does not belong in the library. Is there a question we're trying to answer right now? Is there a proposed action or step? And if so, I would propose we, we focus on that because I think we're in agreement. It does feel like we're all in agreement. Um, I, let me pull it up right now. Alicia and myself put together an article in response because we thought the group would feel the same way. And we reached out to both of the Dr. Shabazz's to take a look at it and help us with revisions before we brought it to you all. Um, if it's okay with everyone, I will share screen and we can read it. It's just two pages. Where is that document? Um, it's in this evening's packet. packet. Okay. It, yeah. It's, is it the first thing in the packet? Um, so we did revise it, like I would say like an hour and a half before the meeting. So let me just pull up the one I have on my screen. 
Um, and I will enlarge it. I believe that's the one that I put in the packet because I saw that you sent two. Um, oh, okay. And that is the first thing. Can somebody read it for us? I haven't opened my packet yet. Does no one want to read it? I don't mind reading it out loud. Yes. Please. Oh, I thought you said you were going to read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn my camera off so my face doesn't radiate red. <laughs> okay. Um, following the murder of George Floyd, youth following the murder of George Floyd, youth led Black Lives Matter protests and the request submitted by the Racial Justice Task Force of Amherst, the town committed to initiating change to make Amherst a more racially equitable community. In December 2020, the Amherst Town Council passed a resolution affirming their commitment to dismantling white supremacy, stating they, the Amherst Town Council hereby affirms its commitment to eradicating the effects of systemically racist practices of the town government, town affiliated organizations, and will review and revise its policies, procedures, bylaws, values, goals, and missions through an anti-racist lens to foster an unbiased and inclusive environment that is free of discrimination, harassment, and negative stereotyping toward any person or group. In 2020, the Amherst town manager and town council approved the charge of the Community Safety Working Group, CSWG, to pave the way for community equity. Our charge has been to A, make recommendations on alternative ways of providing public safety services to the community, and B, to make recommendations on reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. This working group on which we served met an average of two to four hours per week virtually since no November 18th of 2020 to work on delivering thorough reports and recommendations for both parts of our charge. To fulfill our charge, we hired several consulting groups to gather information useful to fulfilling our charge and supporting the town through community engaged research and recommendations. Our consultants included the Seven Generations Movement Collective that gathered community input for an understanding of national trends in the, alternative, um, in the alternatives to community safety and the complex issues within Amherst policing. We hired the Law Enforcement Action Par Partnership, LEAP, to take a deeper look into the APD's policies and we hired the African Diaspora Mental Health Association, ADMHA, to learn more about changes in training, supervision, and accountability to the anti-racist police department. Since last November, our group, to, our group has, has done much to overcome several hurdles, including a lack of transparency and bargaining around town manager advisors, the budget process, the consultant process, and having to advocate for a realistic timeline to complete well thought out reports to ensure the safety of the black indigenous people of color community members in Amherst. Although the end of our charge is near, we urge community leaders to view departments and fundings that benefit the BIPOC community in larger terms beyond just a checkbox or afterthought for diversity initiatives. We ask the community understand the issues that currently and historically plagued the BIPOC community and Amherst as a dynamic and growing diverse community. The CSWG was able to gather data, hold community forums, and put together a solid report that spoke to a narrative that BIPOC community that the BIPOC community in Amherst knows better than those in the most powerful seats in town. As we get closer to the November election, we urge town council ca candidates and current town councilors to remember why the CSWG was formed. We ask that you remember the opportunity the CSWG provides to Amherst as a whole, which is to give voice to BIPOC peoples and respect the narratives of residents that share their individual stories of fear, anxiety, and lack of safety. We ask that you read again and regard our recommendations as valuable to helping create and support a community of diverse residents. Programs, departments, and funding that are designed to serve the BIPOC community should be proposed, developed, and inclusive of that same community. Before you consider how great a cultural center would be in the library, take a minute and think about the staff, leadership, and intention behind the library. If you recall nothing else about our work, we want you to know and we want to make it clear that the BIPOC community in Amherst does not feel safe. Places like Town Hall, the police department, and even schools are not a place BIPOC community members feel at home. So why would another town controlled space such as a library be what we really need? If we as a town mean to affirm our commitment to eradicating the effects of systemically racist practice of town government and town affiliated organization, then let us start by supporting those closest to the issues and, ha and have a chance to design that space that will best support us. I'm sure you're familiar with the Malcolm X quote, you're not so 
You're not to be so blind with patriotism that you can't face reality. Wrong is wrong no matter who does it or says it. I know every Amherst resident reading this loves Amherst. And if you don't love it here, you see the town for all it can be. So let's amplify the recommendations put forth by the CSWG to ensure the safety and well being of the BIPOC community. Amherst has a history of white supremacy that we cannot ignore. Let's move this community forward by letting BIPOC voices guide our work to issues they know and have experience in this town to make Amherst the Amherst we all want it to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's the article we put together. I can share with everybody to make revisions, but um, we thought it would be a good way to kind of tie together the, the issues that we've had to overcome as a group and to also kind of um, talk about the library and the Youth Empowerment Center and the Cultural Center all at once. Ms. So Weiser? what do you, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, I just, one, I'm gonna say that if, do you guys feel like if the library opens up a separate youth center that that is, you know, defranchising or going, you know, or just not right, then I would have that type of a conversation with the folks at the library because maybe they're not even thinking that because yeah. they, in theory, have one now. And then I just want to say that, um, and I'm not justifying anything because I'm not putting out any way that I feel about this, but just to be clear that the town is committing 15.75 million to the project, not 36. The other remaining amount is coming from a mass grant and private donors and a thousand from CPA and a, mil a million from CPA, which I never know how that works, that that might still be Amherst money. But even that 15 million point 75 is a lot, but I just wanted to make sure that people are aware they're not funding the entire 36,000 or 35,000 or a million. million. It still doesn't so matter. All. It still doesn't matter. It's, it's 36 million, it's 36 million. It doesn't matter, follow the money. The reason why I'm pushing 36 million is who is going to get a contract? Contractors will be white people. How, you know, how, how many number of uh, BIPOC folks will benefit from, you know, constructing that building? I mean, there is a lot that is involved. No, I understand. I just yeah. wanted to it's, put it's that out there, though. Million dollars. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Moisson. Um, Ms. Pat and then Ms. Ferreira. I'll, I'll find this one. Okay, um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and I think, you know, we definitely need to move on. I mean, obviously, the article is, is great. Um, um, but, you know, kind of like my final thoughts about this is, especially what Ms. Pat was bringing up in terms of having another, like, youth center in the library. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Because like what you're saying, um, Jennifer, that they've had something at the library. And again, I've never brought my voice to, the, to any of the stuff that they've had there because it doesn't feel inclusive. It doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel like a place where my kids are going to get encouraged and empowered, right, as, as Black boys. So for me, if they go and go create another youth center at the library, as opposed to supporting our youth center, <laughs> the youth center that we recommend it, it's being divisive. And basically you're creating a youth center again for what? For white kids, then. that's what you're creating it. You know, Absolutely. I guess if that's what you wanna do, then just call it that and go, yeah. go for yours, you know, type of thing. But if you want something inclusive, something that's gonna be empowering and youth led with BIPOC youth led and, and BIPOC youth, youth leading it, uh, leading the way, then you need to be supportive of what it is that we've recommended and to create a truly safe space and a space that's inclusive of all. So, yeah. I mean, you know, that that's my, and my, I think my final words on this. Ms. Pat, <laughs> when you speak to the library trustee, that that is, pretty much enough said right there right like it doesn't you be going against us and and instead of supporting us and I think that's the message that needs to be said as yeah. far as it goes with the youth center yeah yeah so just very quickly it's just one trustee not the whole group just one person reach out to me I wanted to meet with me and I'm I'm ready willing anytime any day to meet with people ultimately we want to heal in this town but at the same time, we deserve respect. We need to be on the same table to make decisions. They can't just throw stuff into our throat and say, take it. You know, that's the way it is. That rubs me in a, in a bad way. So I will meet with that person and, you know, listen and take it from there. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Walker. I really, I wanted to agree with um, Ms. Fiera because um, it is really, I agree with it on so many, like I've tried to do things at the library when I was like an at-home mom and it does, it feel, it was very isolating. It didn't feel good. I probably went to like one or two things, you know, when the kids were younger. Um, you know, I know my older kids went to some things on their own, um, you know, but it's not, it's definitely not for everybody. It's definitely not, what the heck, there's a spider in my face, that is disgusting. Um, it's definitely not, it's definitely not a space where everybody, everybody feels welcome. And I do that whole point of like, you wanna put a youth center where you're expected to be quiet and hold quiet space and quiet time. Like that's, that seems, that seems um, counter, that seems yeah. counter, like that doesn't, that doesn't, I don't understand how that's gonna work. And I do agree with Miss Pat when she, she, she said like, okay, you guys want to help support a youth center, fund, help fund ours. And we'll do a youth center outside of, you know, use whatever you were going to use to create your youth center in the library. Put that money aside to help fund the youth center outside of the library, independent of the library. You know, but we already know BID does not care. Like that's, I'm sorry. I just, I have to say that. Like they're not out they're out to make money. It's very clear. And so, you know, and I, and I see it time and time and time again, anybody who's part of that is like, really like, oh, but we need to do this and oh, but we need to do that. But I'm like, what about the people? You guys are about talking about money-making things. You're talking about bringing business to Amherst. Yeah, but you're also, and in the same breath that you're saying, we need to bring business to Amherst, you're strategically pushing families out of Amherst. And the families that you are primarily pushing out are the BIPOC community. So it's it's just, just all, it's just, it's just a bunch of words to me. It's just a bunch of words. It doesn't mean anything. And it's very, dis like, again, I'm very disappointed in this, this community, you know, and I put that in quotes, but I'm, you know, I'm hidden. So I didn't, you can't see my quotes, but, you know, I just, I just, it feels very unauthentic. It feels fake, very, very fake. And I just want somebody from bid or somebody from the library committee or somebody from one of the, you know, from town council or whatever to stand up and be like, you know what, we actually just don't care. We actually don't care. We wanna line our pockets. That's what we wanna do. We don't care about the community. We don't care about the youth. We don't care about anybody, but we're making sure our pockets stay lined making sure that our red line districts stay red line, making sure that this town stays, you know, as white as possible. I, it, like, it would be so refreshing to have somebody say that out loud. And you know they won't, but it's just, it, but their actions are speaking loud enough. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, Ms. Walker, and then I have a comment. Um, I didn't want to take up too much time making a comment on this because I just wanted to voice my agreement with what everyone else said, but just one of the things that really um, struck me about this and this conversation is that when we um, made our recommendations, I think we were really clear about intention and having the intention of like creating something with the intention to serve the BIPOC community, not adding them as an afterthought because you forgot about it in your original plans. And that's what this feels like to me because they've been planning the library for a very long time. And it's at the 19th hour that they wanna figure out how to make it inclusive for the BIPOC community. That, that in itself is not inclusive. Um, and so I think that separate from the library, we need to, as a town, invest in our BIPOC community by creating spaces that are for them. And we allow them to be the integral part of these, the creation of these spaces. And I really think that our group has already started that. And so it needs to be passed down to the people who actually implement these, these um, recommendations need to be majority, majority BIPOC. And they need to make that with the intention to serve the BIPOC community. 
Um, and so I just wanted to stress that um, in regards to my, my disagreeing with putting our recommendations in the library. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Um, the comment that I wanted to add to kind of move us to the next agenda item, when did anybody, I mean, I just did a quick read through of the article. Would you all be able to get edits to me by maybe um, Saturday? Would, would that be a realistic timeline? Ms. Pat? I like what you wrote and everybody is so busy. I think if it's okay with everybody else, um, I will encourage you to email it to Scott tonight. Is everybody in favor of that? What is uh, Mr. Ross? No, if it's actually coming from all of us, I'd I'd like a chance just to to look at it and see whether there's okay. some minor edits. I don't I don't need a lot of time to do it. I'd... And um, in addition to that, can you can we send it so that Brianna can send it through her uh, IT? Brianna can send it through her um, list of folks that in addition to Scott, because it goes to the news outlets and all of those other yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. So y'all might as well go out with a bang, right? Like, we'll yeah. just let everybody know. But before we move on to the next um, section, it says articles, final communications and minutes. And we need to device a motion or create a motion that allows the co-chairs, if it's okay with everybody to approve all the missing minutes and the last minutes of the last meeting because you guys wouldn't be able to prove those anyways because it would be the last meeting um so we need to create a motion for that so that i just have it and then the two co-chairs can work on that um, can, I, can i go okay. back to can i go back to is that can i speak is that okay go ahead miss pat okay so mr ross when do you think you'll be You'll be able to edit because I'm not going to take a look at it again. By five tomorrow. Oh wow. By noon tomorrow, if you need it. I don't want to. I don't want to hold it up. I just. I think by noon tomorrow would be okay. press release. That was the term I was looking for. Sorry. Yeah. So Rihanna, you'll be, you'll be able to send it tomorrow by noon? Yeah, for us to get to okay. the edits, I can send it by noon. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now we can move on. Miss um, Bowman, I see you have your hand up just before I move to the next item. I just want to make sure I didn't miss you. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I need you guys to create a motion. So it could just be as simple as Yes, Russ. I move we authorize our co-chairs to approve any and all minutes. Seconded. Is that all we have to do for a motion or do we have to do a roll call? We have to say all in favor. All, oh, yeah. all. all in favor, uh, raise your hand, I guess. <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> sorry. Russ made the motion. Pat seconded it. Was that correct? Yeah. And then you need to open it up for discussion. And if there's no discussion, then you need to do the roll call vote. Oh, okay. okay. Is there any discussion? No. I'll just say this is with the assumption that the co-chairs will make, if there are any revisions needed, they will make them. That's just so we have to set that understanding that that's what the motion yeah. means. But. Okay. Um, I'll do roll call. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yes. Miss Bowman. Yes. Miss Walker. Yes. Miss Ferreira. Yes. Uh, Miss Pat. Yes. And yes for me. Okay. So I guess we we can go to oh Miss Poinston. I just had one quick question in regards to final communications. How long is our web page going to stay up after we disband? You know, I'm going to at least suggest that or propose that it stays up for a while. There's a lot of information that people are going to look to. The recommendations for Part B are just going to be put on there. I can put those on there either later tonight or tomorrow morning. So I think that it, in general that it should stay up as active and not go into the archives for, you know, a while, at least until the CSW, CSSJC is up. And then we can transfer any of that information over to the C. SSJC um, website. 
Awesome. Okay. Miss Ferreira. Yeah, because that's what I was going to say. I think, you know, it should stay up for a while, at least a couple of months, and then it, everything that, that was there should should be transferred over to the new um, committee, the CSSJC, so we don't lose any of that. Definitely. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones? I would propose that our reports both be available on the active part of the website until all of our recommendations are implemented. I think that they would be on the CSSJC's webpage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's that part of transferring everything over to CSSJC. Awesome, okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the League of Women's Racial Justice Task Force. Um, oh, Ms. Ferreira. Wait, so with final communications, are we talking about, I, I'm still confused, like are we meeting next week? I mean, what's the deal? I just wanna kind of see, can you just go over the schedule so I know what's what for these last remaining two weeks before we kind of go? Yeah. Um, so next week we'll be presenting a town council um, at 6.30 at the Monday meeting. I'm hoping we can still meet for a meeting. I don't think it needs to be long, but I think we should meet for a meeting um, to reflect on our work. It doesn't have to be the full two hours. Mm -hmm. Ms. Can we post sure. a meeting where we can get margaritas? I'm just saying. I, I will. We'll do that too. We'll do that too. <laughs> can we please? <laughs> I think, we should, I think they, we should meet next week, Thursday. Could everybody meet in person next week, next Thursday? I think that would be good. I, well, do I mean, I don't do know. The, but what about the open meeting law and all of that stuff? That we're going to yeah, I don't think I can post the meeting at like the hangar. So, um, <laughs> or Mission Cantina or wherever, so. Um, <laughs> so maybe we meet virtually and then meet afterwards? And then you guys will, in theory, have basically disbanded, so yeah. there's, there's yeah. no. Exactly. No more, yeah. Actually, um, technically we're still until November 1st, right? So we can't still do secret meetings until after November 1st. No, but I will just say, I mean, I'll check with Paul, but I'm literally going to just write on the agenda from virtual to wherever a non-disclosed, whatever location we choose. We, well, we can wait till next week and you know, after next week, we can get together. Don't you think we should celebrate at the last meeting? I'm I think, yeah, yeah I think we need to yeah. celebrate and I you guys need to pat yourselves on the shoulder. It's been a long, it's draining, been, yeah. emotional, yep. almost For a year, sure. yeah. right? So well, I'll, yeah. I'll find out how we do it. I'm going to get I don't drink, but I'll come. <laughs> I will buy you a soda, Miss Pat. Okay, that will work for me. I know. <laughs> or an iced tea. Yeah, my, my friends and my kids think I'm very boring. I am. <laughs> I, I also don't drink alcohol, Miss Pat. Oh, oh, that's right. You said that. Me and my husband, we don't. Lemonade. That <laughs> works for me. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm. I'm. I'm not. I. Whatever we do, we it needs to be outdoors because I'm not meeting with people. That's the only way I'll meet with people. Yeah. Is outdoors. Let's. You know, if we're going to do a celebration, let's make sure we're doing it at a place and a time when everybody can come and check with Darius and yeah, see, if, make sure Tashina can come. Like, yeah, I just I'm now that now that it's getting colder and people are being indoors more, I'm being a little more like I'm being a little more anal about it. And plus, I'm indoors around people all day at work, so I kind of like I kind of get home and I just want to be home. So, um, and it's not because I'm not because I don't want to, it's like, I'd even, I'd even like, if you guys met and I would be willing to even virtually meet with you, I just, I don't, I'm, I'm up in the air about it because I'm, I have an autoimmune disease. So I just, I'm really anal about being around people that I'm not like people I'm not around all the time, you know? So I just, I wanted to put that out there. So at least when you're thinking about that, like if you want me in real life, then we just got to think about being outdoors somewhere. And I think almost like, you know, I don't know how people feel. Johnny's Lover, Cruzana, Mission. I don't know if Mission's open on Thursdays. El Camelito does not have outdoor dining though. Yeah. But um, 
those Sorry, businesses. The that's okay. Um, have outdoor dining. Yeah, I definitely feel like we could find somewhere outdoors so everyone can come. It'd be nice to see you all in real life since we've been doing so much work. <laughs> we never took any picture, you know? Oh, yes. You guys should take a photo and then I'll put it on the website, on your webpage. So I have to do my hair now? Yes, you do, girl. <laughs> yes, you do. Man, I was going to see how long I could go without doing my hair. All right, fine. I think if we do this before November 1st, we're going to have to invite the public. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to literally post a meeting at some, whatever location we come up with through whatever means that we come up with it to that's what we'll, we'll, we'll be. I mean, I'm trying to think of like, and when we've had certain people retire and the council or at that time, the select board came, it was still the same rules. Right. So I don't know what they did in those purposes, but I know that we've had things in other locations for retirees and select board members have attended. So there's got to be a way to, to get it done. Okay. Okay. I think so. Maybe we can meet next week, but maybe we can meet next week just to reflect and to talk about um, next steps for the book, the CSWG book. Cause I'm really interested in pursuing that. And that's a project. Um, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Me three. <laughs> So let's meet next week to do that and additionally find a time that we can all meet in real life if yeah. the group's okay with that. Yep, that sounds good. Could we make okay. next week's meeting start as early as we can? Is, is 5.30 the earliest? I could do five. I have another, I have another meeting. Deb, can you do five? I can do five, yeah, five okay, is I five. can do five. Let's meet at five next. That, that would okay. really help me, thank you. Yeah. And you guys want to discuss the book? I'm just trying to redo the agenda. Yeah, we're discussing the book, yes. Yeah, the book and final thoughts process the meeting because I'm sure we'll have thoughts to process. To yeah, and also, <laughs> um, I don't know if it's, we have time tonight, but I think we should give input to the top managers um, uh, performance review. Um, I think we should... And I think Brian, uh, from yeah, the could we do it as a collective? Already, we can use some of it. I actually just got that email. Oh, Miss Ferrer, I see your hand. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was gonna say if we could do it, could we do that as a collective? Because I did see it too, but I was kind of yes, like, oh, as collective okay. next week. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But positive and challenges that we encounter mm -hmm. with the town manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be part of our meeting too. Also, yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so we can move on to the next agenda, agenda item unless anybody had anything else. Um, so Marcy Sklo from the League of Women's Voters Racial Justice Task Force reached out to see if there was any ways that um, the Racial Justice Task Force could support us. I had two things in mind, but I wanted to bring it back to the group before I responded to her. Um, I was thinking to see through with the resident oversight board and then to help spread the word about the um, community safety and social justice committee. But I wanted to open up as a group discussion um, so that I could provide her a list of things if group members had anything they wanted to add. Mr. Vernon Jones. I would want them to advocate with town council and with town manager for all of our recommendations. Okay. And that library scenario with the youth center, someone should have a conversation with Marcy about the thoughts about that. And then that is something that they could possibly be on board with. I don't know for sure, but. Okay, I think, I feel like she will. She, she was the one that reached out to me um, and asked me to get CSWG input because she said that it was discussed at great length at a district meeting last night. Last night, it was, yeah. yeah. For, yeah. What meeting last night? District um, two. Oh, I was I was at that meeting, and I was the only BIPOC person in that meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wait, districts have meetings? District two, we had. Yeah, yeah it was so, a good meeting. It was it was actually good. It was a good meeting. Yeah. The only district that has really most districts only do them either quarterly, if that, and then D five has spent a lot of time pre COVID having district meetings and I know like I even got them to do it over at Butternut one day just trying to get them exposed to different people and different you know just 
so that they could understand because you know they yeah. live a different life and they don't understand they don't see so they need to understand and see so um d5 probably has the most meetings um but that is also something that changes depending on who who is the district counselors and they can be as often um but clearly to sheena even though you're involved with local government to some degree you don't know that that's happening so that does say that there's an issue there that the word of district meetings doesn't get around yeah yeah um yeah because i would i mean i probably would have i don't know i probably would have gotten gone to especially having are you yeah, two or three gone, i don't know port river yeah so where where two yeah where oh yeah. this this see i didn't even know that i don't yeah i didn't know that yeah yeah some of my family members didn't get in, invite either but i i got in the email and um, our rep was actually there, um, made it dumb. Most of our, most of the discussion was, believe it or not, it's on library. So, but everybody was um, respectful of one another and everyone learned from each other and we agreed to disagree, so. And I know that library and zoning bylaws are top two conversations at all district meetings right yeah. now. Well, we, we also they also we also talked about redistricting as well, and our legislature uh, gave us update about redistricting on state level. So it was a very good meeting. I liked it. Thank you, Miss Pat. Um, okay, so for Marcy, I just want to confirm the list with everyone to see through the resident oversight board. Help us with getting the word out about our successor group helping us support us with our all of our recommendations and then um, our stance on the library youth center and cultural center. Okay, so we can- And they have a meeting on, on Saturday. Do people know that? Okay. So we can move to um, the next agenda item, which is the CSWG report for part B update. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if you guys all saw the packet, but it's finished. Um, thank you Yay! to everyone that put so much work into it. <laughs> it looks so good. Um, honestly, I was looking at it before this meeting and just thinking, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank yes. you, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Special thanks to, to, to Mr. Ross. Ross! <laughs> Woo! Being, you know, just a trooper. <laughs> yep. Um, but um, so what about for you and Brianna, you and Alicia, how are you all feeling in terms of the presentation on the 25th? Are we clear that we'll all be there as 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 panelists and all that? And uh, do they know that that's what's going to happen? Yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Um, Lynn reached out today and tried to ask if a different committee could go before us, but I asked that we go first on the agenda because we've had this date ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, we are all going to go in as panelists. Alicia and I will work on the PowerPoint tonight, Friday, and hopefully have it done on Saturday afternoon. If you guys would like, I can share the PowerPoint with you. If you guys want to add graphics or make any edits, I'm open to it. Yeah, can we see it? Yeah. Um, I don't have it yet. Oh, that's okay. Oh, you don't have it. <laughs> yeah, I will have that's it. Right. But I'll have it by Saturday afternoon, though, and okay. I can send you guys all then for okay. feedback. So, okay. do you do you want feedback from us by when? Because obviously, the presentation is on Monday. So, do you want us to get it back to you by like Sunday night or something like that? Yeah. Or? Sunday night would be good. Okay. What What about the town councilors? Have they Are they going to re Have they received it? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. When? When? Today, because um, nice. I mean, it just was released today. And then the you guys were, I posted a meeting for the 25th as well. Nice, okay. So so will we be, since it's 6.30 that it starts, will we be like the first ones on then in terms of the agenda? We should be, yes. Good, I, be she, asked, she asked if somebody could go ahead of us, but I told her that to be respectful of everybody's families and obligations, we'd prefer to go first. So Excellent. we should be going first. Thank you so much for doing that. Cause you know, if, you. if another group would have gone first, who knows how long it would have taken. And obviously I'm spreading the word. I want to let people know so that they can be online. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. So, so, oh. Yeah, 
notice that someone in our audience has a hand raised and I don't know whether we want to. It's Marcy, it. I believe. Um, and if you want to open up for a second public comment at another, I mean, I guess I don't really know how to touch that, but so like the reparations group does, but it's listed on their agenda. They do a public comment at the beginning and the end of the meeting. I'm okay if she wants to come in. I'm fine with that too. Um, I'm fine yeah. with it. I know I it's the open meeting law. <laughs> that oh. is the issue. I, All right, so do we should do we have to wait or what do you think? I'm so sorry um, to be butting in, but I just wanted to ask, and I I see my husband's name is there, not mine. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for just talking about us on the agenda. On Saturday, we're having this meeting, a brown bag program. And we, I, I just wanted to get clear, if anybody from your group would like to come and present about your work. And if not, I know it's very short time, you know, there's been no warning. Um, if not, then we would invite you to come, some version of you guys to come on in November to speak. But we, we're doing these programs monthly. And if you can't come Saturday, we will change the program because we don't want to speak for you and represent your work for you. But if there was a way that you wanted to come and it would be beneficial for you to have this opportunity before Monday's meeting to talk about your work and whatever you wanted to talk about um, in terms of what support you would be looking for or whatever, it's mostly a league program, but we have sent out the notices to a bunch of other um, groups. And so it's all on Zoom and more people might come. But um, I, I know Ms. Pat mentioned that it could only, the presenters could only be the two co-chairs. So um, we will change our plan if the two co-chairs cannot, one of you cannot come. And also if nobody else, if, you know, can come to present. Um, and then we'll, at a later date, we will invite you again in November. But it would be a kind of opportunity to talk about your work in a public way before Monday. Thank you, Marcy. Thank My you so point much, of Marcy. Uh, Brian, are you are you available on Saturday? No, I'm not. Um, and Alicia, you're probably campaigning. Yeah, I will. I will be at the Brookfield Farm on Saturday. But what time? Two p.m. I might be able to, but it would be so close that I would be afraid to commit for sure. Okay. Um, if, if I don't want to do it, if it's rushed for you and doesn't have benefit for you, I don't want to add Alicia to your plate. I know it's a very busy time. So it's not to burden you at any, in any way. And it seems like it, it might be a missed opportunity and we'll just have you come in November and we'll, we'll, we'll invite you in a more formal way uh, with, with more of a, a lead time. Does that make more sense? Um, Marcy, would it be helpful if you guys announced um and maybe referred folks to their website and ask them to attend uh, Monday's meeting to speak in support of the CSWG? Absolutely. I mean, we have a whole PowerPoint that Ash Hartwell cr uh, created that has lots of information about your work. But then we started realizing like, we can't talk about your, you have to talk about your work. It's not for us to talk about it. So, but we can at least do that. Um, Jennifer, that, that would be absolutely fine. And, um, and we can also have people read your, your latest reports and stuff. So that's great. That's a good compromise. 
And I think we missed the open meeting law because you are actually League of Women Voters is actually on the agenda. So I think that might have yeah. figured out the open and meeting. And I law. think that Richard Sclove is by default a member of the League of Women Voters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jennifer, are you going to be around? Are you planning to attend that meeting? Um, I did see it. Um, I did see it and I've attended other brown bags and they're really good. And so I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I, you know, I can't guarantee it because I have like a 10 page paper due Sunday and it's, it's, you know, it's hard, but I will make um, a very, um, all attempt to make it, but I don't also don't want to speak on your behalfs either. Like I, that's not what I want to do either. So um, I, I can speak in support of you guys. Can I ask? Can you, can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Can so I we're good. Ask, is, is the idea that it's only the co-chairs, is that some sort of a rule? Like if we're in kind of a discussion, Miss Pat, can you join the discussion and not be a formal presenter? Absolutely. Or, yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's only been the co-chairs because those are the designated um, designees of who the group voted to you know represent the group but also when you have them when you invite them in november they will have i hate to say this word dissolved and so therefore there's no anybody anybody all everyone can attend without it being of an issue so That's it fine. is probably a little better because i wouldn't be able to post for saturday so what we'll do is shift our agenda a little bit so that it's mostly focused on the work that we're doing. And one of our work is advocacy for you guys. And so in that realm, we'll talk about um, some of your projects. And then Miss Pat and um, Jennifer, if you come, you know, during the discussion, that can be a, a possibility. Okay, thank you so much for- Thank, for thank you. Oh, I think Ms. Ferreira has a question. Yeah, just, I, I mean, I think it, it'll be very important if your group would be able to just be supportive and spread the word. I think that's really key. We need to have as many supporters on the Monday meeting as possible because over there, we're going to do presentations, it's going to be all the information in minute detail. So we need to have supporters. We need to have supporters uh, speaking out on our behalf. So I think you doing that would be excellent. It would be an excellent opportunity to really spread the word out there for us share it on your website share it to your members just just you know have them be there on monday okay we'll do what we can thank you marcy i see um mr vernon jones also has his hand up yeah i completely agree with what deborah just said and uh marcy our report does have an executive summary at the beginning which is a nice two-page summary of things and i would also refer you to the executive summary of the leap report which is in the appendix, which is very okay. informative. Okay. Have you the, gotten our report, our new uh, report? I think so. I think I've gotten it. Um, if you- I'll Russ, send it to you right, I okay. can send it to you right now. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, appreciate it everyone. I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> thank you so much, Marcy. Okay. So with that being said, I think we can move to, uh, oh, Ms. Sarah, sorry. I do have a question, sorry, because obviously uh, I didn't, you know, this just came out, which looks beautiful, the, the report and stuff. And of course I was looking at it, different points, but so what happened to the ADMHA portion of it? So. I, I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> no, it's just. Everyone it's was been... like. <laughs> it, it's Which just one? it's just been a little bit complicated and so um we received an in i received an email the day of or the day before that the report was due that you know someone in his family had been in contact with someone who had tested positive and then that he wasn't feeling well and then i'd asked for the report and then sean and i have been reaching out and we haven't received or heard back okay Okay, so so were we able so, to include then, um, uh, Mr. Rush, were we able to include the, the portion that you had come up with? Yes. Wait, pause. Okay. I just missed, I just missed that. Yes. So, 
like who like somebody sick or somebody got exposed to something that's the only part oh, I heard I, but so Tashina uh, let me just check in does do you re, were you around when we were asking the ADMHA to come and as a come in as a consultant for training was it training purposes uh, how to create an anti-racist how to create a, culture. yeah an anti-racist yeah, and, and the PD yeah and the APD I think I was here for the beginning of it but then I it's so been crazy we yeah. had consulted in the same way that we did with Leap um, uh -huh. for them to write this report. And then the day of the report, we received mm -hmm. word that um, the individual who's, who was driving the project um, wasn't wasn't feeling well. And we haven't really, and that was like two weeks ago or a week ago, two weeks, a week ago. And we haven't really heard anything or we haven't oh. heard anything since. Oh, no. All right. But Mr. Russ did um, was was very you know wise and um, had a plan B in place, and so he wrote a statement that Brianna and I had looked at, and I think other people had looked at too, and it's very good. So we're including that instead. Did anybody have any um, final thoughts on the uh, report for Part B, or any other things under this agenda item? Okay. I, uh, I just want to express, you know, I did a lot of writing, but I just want to express my thanks for everybody's contributions. You know, I mean, every single person who's on the screen, your voice was in my head while I was writing. I remembered specific things that you had said in various meetings. Uh, and I just had such a sense of a team effort and, and everyone's intelligence and experience in forming the whole report. Uh, and it, uh, it made me made me proud to be able to get down so many brilliant thoughts that the group had put forward. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm going to be honest. When I looked at the report, that document is amazing. Um, I really do think that we're making history. That the report was so detailed, amazing. The graphics, everything about it. I can't wait to put together the book and to see all of our recommendations through. I think, yeah. <laughs> Um, Thank you. No, that's all I can say. Thank you. Two words. So the next agenda item is a CRESS implementation meeting follow-up. I was only able to attend the last quarter of the meeting today because I had a work meeting. So I want to defer to um, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Walker, and Ms. Moyston to fill the group in on the implementation meeting. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, we did take back to the group that uh, the CSWG was not satisfied with not having 24-7. Uh, and the implementation team agreed. Uh, um, Russ, we can't hear you. Is there any way you could turn your volume up too? Well, You're very let low. Just, let me just talk louder. Is that better? It's better. We, we did take to the implementation team the concern of the CSWG that it was not okay with us not to have 24-7. And the implementation team agreed today that we would have 24-7 uh, response. Uh, and exactly how to staff that and pay for it and all is still underway. And there may be some hours when people are on call, but on call means they will go out in response to needs. Okay. Uh, and that was a big shift that we got from the implementation team today. And it's totally thanks to the input of this group. We also have not worked out the details of dispatch, but we have a complete agreement that in addition to calling 911, there will be a, another crest, there will be two other crest numbers. Uh, one which goes through a, um, a dispatch center of some kind and one which can reach uh, Crest responders or the director directly. Uh, so we again, just, a lot of details to work out, but that's all uh, that much is agreed to. I, I might ask you to repeat that because we just lost Miss Pat and I know that Miss Pat felt really passionate about that piece of it. Um, so I'm not sure where she went, but she fell off the call. 
Uh, look, there she is. Miss Pat, can you hear us? Yeah, my battery died. That's okay. So I, I don't know why I put my ear close to I the miss? screen. What did I miss? Russ? Did you hear what I said about dispatch? Nope. We have not worked out the details of dispatch at all. And Mike Curtin has not been available to consult with us um, about it. Uh, but we do have an agreement from everybody that there will be three ways to access uh, CRESS. One is through 911, one is through a number, uh, which is a CRESS number that will be handled by dispatchers. Uh, and again, we don't know who or how. Uh, and then one will be another phone which goes either directly to responders or to the director of the program when the director's um, on duty. So there'll be three different ways. Two of them will be CREST specific without any police uh, interference or access at all. So I guess what I want to say about that is, you know, I didn't expect that we will accomplish everything that we started, but with the um, CS, this uh, Community Safety Social Justice Committee, and yeah, perhaps could take up on that because if we don't, you know, we didn't have to amplify the um, alternative 911 number in order to, for BIPOC folks to access services. So I'm hoping that the, the replacement group will continue the work, some of the work that we're currently doing and come up with, with additional recommendation moving forward, even if we didn't accomplish everything yep. this time around. If we can make sure that we communicate that to the town council on Monday, that we're not able to complete everything, but we're hoping that the replacement group, you know, would take on, on things that we didn't get around to do. It's, it's in their charge. Yeah. And Miss Pat, did you hear about the 24 seven? No. Oh, we, we took back to the implementation team the, the dissatisfaction of this group about it not being 24 seven. And we now have an agreement that uh, we will have 24 seven response. And even if there are a few hours on a few days when there's not somebody on duty, they will be on call and the people on call will go out to respond to calls and be paid for that. I guess that's what you do with compromise, but it's not good enough for me, but it's something. The way, the way I see it is good faith effort be made, but it's not ideal. Can people hear me? People are asking me. Oh, Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's a good faith, faith effort, but it's not what I envision it to be. And I can't speak for the rest of you, but it is what it is. But thank you. Thank you guys for bringing it up, you know, back to the team. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it in terms of at least having this opportunity to have it be 24 seven. And then, um, you know, my thing is though, is pressing right in this new group is going to have to be the one to press it to make sure that as it, it increases and there's more people calling in, because especially with this other, with these other numbers, and that's going to be key. That's, that's, uh, the area that we're really going to have to to really figure out how these other numbers are going to to function because people aren't going to trust the 911 so they are going to trust these other numbers the crest dispatch one or the one that goes directly to crest so that's going to have to be really marketed well because as that increases then there needs to be more staffing and more funding put towards towards crest which again the cssjc will have to put the pressure to make yep. sure that it happens Oh, don't worry. Obviously we're, we're running out of time, you know. That's right. Don't worry, they will. I'm applying. And you too, Debbie. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> and then Alicia at the town council. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Miss Ferreira. Um, I also 
joined the implementation meeting just a bit late. I think Russ gave a pretty good review, unless there's anything, Ms. Moisten, that you think critical that we missed. No, I mean, it. it the one thing about having the doing this with the PD, I will say, is that we get input that we don't necessarily think about. Like the PD and the fire department have a clause that they can't live 15 miles outside of the border of Am past, you know, more than 15 miles past outside the border because of reasons of emergencies and on calls. And but those are the exact same things that we'll have to imply to some degree to some if not all of the responders at the same time. So, I mean, those are that's a piece of it that we, when, you know, we forget about certain things that bring really good value that we're working with them together to get these things done. Cause you know, it's, it's those little small things. So it, it was a really good meeting today. And I think that moving forward, we'll get some more progress and, and it'll start to move a little faster. I did not know that that's a new information to me. See, look. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Moisten. Um, does anybody else have any questions in regards to today's implementation meeting? So, yes, I do. So moving forward after November 1st, what is the status of three of you in terms of CRES implementation as CSWG will be dissolved? What does that mean? Uh, we will remain on the implementation. Oh, team. good. Okay, good. Nice. I would like to add that I'm I'm hoping that even though CSSJC will be involved, there will be need to be implementation teams for other parts of other recommendations that have been made, and I'm and I'm kind of hoping that we can swing with including some of the folks from CSSJC and and. Um, Ms. Walker, Ms. Owen, and Mr. Vernon Jones, if possible, right? Because it, your vision, they're helping it come through the implementation, helps it come to fruition, and, and then we just all work together continuously because a lot of the recommendations are going to require implementation. Thank you, Ms. Moisten. Are there any other questions in regards to today's implementation meeting? Any status around hiring press director, uh, salary scale, did you guys you know, bring that up? Um, yes, so that we are still advocating for um, higher pay. Uh, and so Brianna and I will have a meeting to advocate for that with the town manager. Is it actually tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, so tomorrow we'll tomorrow. have a meeting. Yeah. So tomorrow we will have a meeting with the town manager to advocate for that further. So there hasn't been any real updates from last week, I don't believe. No. Um, it's the same for the DEI director. The only change for the DEI director that I can think of immediately is that some of those bullet proofs, bullet points, there's like a page and a half of bullet points, and that just um when you look at the salary already looks uneven. And so while there's got to be an, a way to wordsmith it so the same point is getting across but not so many bullet points it just it a page and a half of bullet points and then um the city of pittsfield just adver is just advertising for their chief of diversity and equity and so the, there's just like on a page a page and a half and it has all of the same very valued points and so we need to shrink that it just looks like too much work for what you're going to get out of it. And there's got to be a better way to word it so that there's not as many bullet points. Thank you, Ms. Moisten. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I would say let's let's try to get the, once we have the higher salary level, we can, we can wordsmith it to a, uh, but and yeah. also, I don't think we, our advertisement needs to include everything that's we, we well, don't, you, we, we don't usually advertise an entire job description. So what ends up happening is like on our town, what, so everything directs the applicant to the town website. So we have like, if I advertise on jobs in the Valley, there's a specific link that's connected to the specific acquisition. And so when you click on it, it routes you to that specific acquisition. That way we can track how people are finding out about the different jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're on our website, it has the entire job description listed on there. But like if you 
go on to jobs in the valley you're only going to get the lead in and then use the link below right. to reach out so that's they, they what happens the there salary will wordsmith it down to a reasonable number of words <laughs> yep thank you mr vernon jones miss ferreira so in terms of the implementation um, group and, and the you know and the three of you obviously is like who you know while we have this gap in the CS implementation um, group and I'm saying not CSS JC is not established until when they start I'm not sure when they're going to start or not can you hear me the internet is saying it's we we missed a, a little we question. missed yeah. You want to shut off your video? Yeah. yeah, you're freezing up a bit. Okay, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, so I was saying that. Um, an... Sorry, Deborah. I think we're okay. still losing you. Okay, you can go ahead, and then I'll. Can you put it in the chat? Yeah, go ahead. I was saying no, just. No, there's before... no chat. Oh, that's no chat. Maybe if you try logging out and logging back in. Um, okay. And then I don't know, Miss Pat, if you also had your hand up. Um, yes. So um, would the implementation team like continuous? Like what will happen when you become town councilor? So it will be two of, two of you now then or? No, I, I mean, I think that Alicia can still be a part of the implementation team. Even if her role changes in January. Okay. Yeah, and hopefully by January, we are like almost Done. ready to okay. roll out. I'm really hoping that by then, um, because in theory, even though we keep changing the timeline, we still need to stick having February being the rollout time. So. Okay. Any uh, job description for the responders yet? Drafted? No. No, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Um, we have not worked on the responder description uh, job descriptions yet, but we did get um, some direction from Leap that they've just they have provided us with their report, the implementation team. Uh, so we have some guidance there, and I think we are possibly hoping that the director will, uh, once they're on board, will help the implementation and the selection of responders and all of those things. So it's all in the works, but we don't have anything finalized for that yet. So my last question is, um, if I were to go to Ames website, will I be able to pull um, implementation meeting notes? How would resident know yeah. what is going on? Because so I remember Dr. Shabazz, you know, raising concern about how do we know? And I we trust, you know, the CSWG members representing, but you know, how do we keep up with what is being decided, discussed? Are there like meeting notes? We no. don't currently have meeting notes. Um, and we weren't like we weren't given the okay to record live and do all of that because it's it's an implementation group and it's not a committee per se. Um, so I think that's something we should talk about. Um, I think that I would like to let Deborah ask her question because I think she's go if she's gonna ask what I think she's gonna ask, it's gonna be along the same lines of like who we would be reporting to. Um, Deborah, do you wanna just finish your question while you pop back in before I finish? Well, hopefully you guys can hear me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. No? Oh. <laughs> All right, just, just go ahead. No, go ahead. We can hear you now. It's... Just go ahead. I'll just listen. Can you okay. text it to me? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, so I wanted to address the, the fact that there will be a gap between uh, the CSWG being finished and the creation of the C 
CSSJ. SSJC. JC. JC. Um, thank you. Uh, and so I'm not sure because I'm not sure if we discussed whether or not the implementation team would be reporting to them if they are um, officially a group before January or anything like that, but we, we haven't currently established anything in regards to that. So, you know, I've talked to Paul about whether or not this was gonna be open to the public and I, you know, I don't wanna speak for him when he's not here, but what I will say is that um, the implementation team's goal is to go reach to the community to do community forums by many different means and checking in and letting individuals know where we are. So the first one we did was kind of, I believe, to get input. The next one that we do is to kind of say where this is where we are and to receive input from where we are and, you know, what the thoughts are from there and then to have another one like in every in, a, in probably like quarter steps of what we're doing i i think that because it's made up you know what i'll say is the implementation team is running in the same manner as any other staff meeting that doesn't technically isn't open to the public Thank you, Ms. Marston. Ms. Pat, oh, sorry, I think Ms. Owen, but Ms. Pat, if it's the same question, I think that if that's okay with you, Brianna, to allow Ms. Pat to continue. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, uh, Brianna, it's okay. Are you sure? Yep, 100%. So my question, would it, would, would, we, be a bit, would we be able to post meeting notes at the bare minimum? Because what I'm hearing from the community is people are excited about the CREST program, but the community, a lot of people don't have any idea that the chief of police is helping us develop this program and that decisions that are being made with him. So I think if we could at least publish notes, it would help to build community trust for the um, for the program. Notes at the bare minimum. I understand why it can't be recorded, but notes on progress. I don't think that the community should have to wait until quarterly forums because at that point decisions are already made, conversations are already had, perspectives are already included. I think the one thing that I really got from bringing the implementation meetings back to the CSWG is hearing everybody's perspectives. I mean, I think so you should talk have, to Paul tomorrow. Okay, I, I have Deborah's text. Can people yeah, hear me? That's Pat. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so Deborah says, who will the implementation group be reporting to before the CSSJC is in place? Will the group post on a website so the community is kept posted on what is happening. Should I read it again? Thank you, Ms. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pat and Ms. Ferreira for the input. And so I think if everyone is okay with that, we can discuss that with Mr. Balkelman tomorrow because we are going to be meeting with him tomorrow. Ms. Moyston? So I, my suggestion when you talk to Paul tomorrow, because I won't be in, I'm feeding the football team tomorrow, um, is that you suggests that there's a website created for Cress, and that that information can be housed on that website um, and things like other you know other programs that are similar th to this can be also like a resource to that can be on that page as well so people can kind of have an understanding how other communities are doing it I mean that is the way that I would try to move forward with that if he's not going to have it open to the public so of course yes first ask for it to be open to the public and then if it's not going to be at the bare minimum, I would request for a website. I mean, they would need a website anyways, so. I, I guess uh, we still have not addressed um, Deborah's question. So who would be the three rep reporting to? So what is the point of having three of you still be part of the implementation team? Because the, the benefit of you guys currently is you bring stuff to us and then we give you guys feedback, you take it back. But if there is nobody to report to, so what is the, so what then? I'm just gonna say that it's important that Alicia, Alicia and Russ and Miss Brianna attend the implementation meetings. Um, I understand. and. Trust me, I was like, how does that work out? Because you guys will be dismantled and then we won't be bringing the information back to you. But 
at bare minute, they, they need to stay a part of the implementation team. Somebody from CSWG needs to stay on to speak in the voice of, I mean, they, I just, the implement of uh, the, they need to continue if possible to stay on the implementation team. I know that we're not reporting to you guys or we're not reporting to another group, but the input that they bring in every meeting and the advocacy that they do for the community in every meeting is crucial for the cause. So I like uh, Deb's suggestion that perhaps, you know, the three of you can post your notes on, on uh, uh, the town website, at least, you know, some of us who, who still want to follow what is going on, we can go there and read it. Um, this is something I really was afraid of, like we will end and there is no replacement and um you know things will fall apart i am not saying that the three members should not continue but how effective is the question mark because they need our support you know when you guys came with with issues last week you went back and said you know the group wants 27 uh, 24 7 and now there would be nobody to like support you guys if you guys raise issues so you know, it speaks to the priority that a town places on BIPOC appears. That, that's all I can say. That's all I can say. Thank you, Ms. Pat. In addition to, oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Mr. Vernon Jones. In addition to whatever else we do, uh, I think getting the CSSJC up and running as soon as possible is really critical. So and we need more BIPOC. Needed for that is more BIPOC applicants. Yes. That's the key thing that will move that forward. Yes. It's, um, you know, it started off the first day that it opened up. We've received um, several applications, but this is Amerson somehow. <laughs> not always do Black uh, BIPOC community members apply for, or, yeah, so apply. And so we need more BIPOC community members, which part of it is, I think, because also you just don't want to say you're a BIPOC community member, you should automatically sit on. Like we need to have, to be able to make a selection of the people who are going to be able to get the job done, who are the most educated and, ex and have an expertise somewhere in there to help get that job done or some lived experience that will help move it. So please reach out to people you know. And so not only is it going to be CSSJC, but then we have Rob coming up. And so all of those are going to need to be like um, BIPOC majority. And so we really need the advocacy. I, you know, I'll start Facebooking, stalking people, but um, it would be nice if, and I'm not sure you guys have, but we just, we need that community like push from each other to help encourage people to help make this change, right? Because what's gonna slow it down is the membership at this point. So does the town manager have a target date to create the- No, nope. I mean, it's just, we're just waiting for folks to apply. Um, and so whoever's applying from this committee, please do so. <laughs> at, like, you know, and the way that the meetings are designed can be any, you know, that will be up to the group. So, you know, maybe at the beginning, it might be more often, but it can, you know, change to bi-weekly or monthly or, or whatever this time goes by. I cannot do more than monthly. It has to be monthly. But so that's something that you guys will decide as a group together. I, and I can't, I can't do, I can't do weekly no more. I understand. Maybe bi-weekly, the first couple, maybe one or two months, but monthly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so, but that's, that's something that the group wants the people are appointed that they need to make clear, right? Like we're only going to meet once a month or we're going to meet bi-weekly or whatever it is. And then that's the way that it rolls out. Um, I've been talking to people and I think the way we've been treated CSWG and feeling that everything that we recommended wasn't taken seriously and people were talking to me like, Pat, why do you want me to join? Um, is something going to come out of it? Basically, there's, you know, they're telling me that our group, you know, put in so much time and not much gained and they don't want to waste their time is the feedback I'm getting from some people. 
And I, and I understand that. And I understand that frustration from the community and from looking at it with municipal eyeglasses on or through a municipal lens, you guys have made major move, movement, even though not you guys, your recommendations weren't, aren't at this moment being created the way that you wanted them to necessarily, you know, for instance, like the Crest program's not fully funded. So, or to the, to the degree that you had recommended, but the fact that this committee created an a, a, a entire two departments is really big in the municipal, from a municipal standpoint. And so I really encourage people, the only way that it's gonna happen more and happen faster is if we all come together and just keep working and working and working. And I and it'll start to slow down after a while, but that's the only way that it's gonna move. And you guys have done, made incredible strides at the same time, but I understand how the community feels. Thank you, Ms. Pat and Ms. Moiston. Mr. Vernon Jones. Eric, are we gonna to try to end by eight? Uh, yes, it, if it's okay with everyone, um, there's just two agenda items left. One of them we already briefly touched on. Um, so unless there are any last questions or comments in regards to the Crest implementation, uh, Brianna and I will bring that up with Mr. Bachelman tomorrow to see if there is a way that if we cannot open it up to the public that we can at least post meeting notes um, on a regular basis and on a website. Um, so if that is okay with everyone, I will move on to the next agenda item. Okay, great. Um, so the resident oversight board follow up. So the <clears throat> The police union representatives have been made aware by the town manager's office that all matters concerning the Crest Group and oversight group will now be necessary to bargain. Um, so Mr. Vernon Jones had sent out the original document of the resident oversight board before we had edited it. And I believe that that is the document that they're in possession of. So I know <clears throat> at the last meeting we talked about Brianna writing to the chief in regards to the membership that we talked about, the changes that we talked about. However, the original, they have the original proposal before our negotiations. Um, and that is what the police union is currently looking at. Mr. Vernon I Jones. Which I, I don't believe that's correct um, because the chief, let's see, I called the chief to confirm a meeting that we had scheduled with him. And he told me that uh, this was initiated not by the town manager, this was initiated by the police union uh, that they wanted the lawyers to talk. And I, we, don't, we don't know for sure that, it's, that their claim is negotiation. But anyway, the police union and their lawyer have gotten involved. And, but I had already made the change that the membership needed to be people without police experience. And I sent that version of it to him. And he told me that that was the version he would give to the union. Okay. So we Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones for that clarity. Uh, Ms. Owen. Oh, that was just my question as to whether the prior law enforcement background had been um, put back in to the document. Cause I thought that we had sent um, the document prior to negotiations to them. So that was yeah. my mistake. But then we, we did have an earlier document and then, he, but he, he and I talked just when he was about to have to give them a document. And I said, wait until I send this to you. I'll get it to you right away. Okay. Um, I'm not okay. sure the wording was exactly what we have now, but it, but the exclusion of police experience was, was in there. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat. So I really, I feel that we didn't need to push uh, the new uh, replacement committee to start next month. So, Ms. Moistin, if you have the ad or something, I, you know, I'm happy to post it on my Facebook or something like that. We need to start reaching out to our network so that we can support the implementation rep, press implementation reps. Um, at least they can report to the new group because you guys need the support. Yeah. yeah. And so I will ask Brianna to do a Facebook, create a Facebook, not mm -hmm. this Brianna. IT Brianna to, to create a Facebook, um, what is it Sound called, story or whatever it is. Yeah. And then um, we can grab it and share it out. 
Okay, and let's... that way you guys can have it. Hmm. Um, at, least, yeah. at least at the minimum to start. Deb, what do you think? Middle of November or end of the... But that's, I don't know that that can happen like that just because of the process. What so, process? Oh, yes, interview. the interview process. And then it has to go before... Um, TSO, I think it is, and or no, GOL, and then GOL refers it back to the council, and then it can be approved by the council. So you're looking like at a minimum a month um, for that process. But the other thing that I wanted to go back to speak about, Rob, and probably the CSSJC is that um, somewhere you probably need to talk about who's sitting on the interview committee, um, because I think that, that the individuals that are going to be on the interview committees for these two committees are very crucial, right? As opposed, so the way that it's set up now, the chair of a committee, the town manager, and um, someone from the resident advisory board sit on the interview committees um, and the staff liaison. But in most cases, I mean, these are brand new committees, so there's not that. And I think that you're gonna want these to be very similar to the way that, um, the reparations committee was done, the way that you guys, um, the process, the interview process that you guys went through where the interviewees are BIPOC community members that are not necessarily attached to the town. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. And Brianna, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we already advocated for that to the town manager Did and you? we were told yeah. that we would create the interview team and that we would not be a part of that, but that no. they have a good- Okay going on but is it in writing somewhere because um again it is i, I don't okay because i don't know how long paul is going to be our town manager not saying that he's leaving anytime soon but not only that but i had this conversation with him today and he didn't i mean like it i it, he didn't say that we've already been in agreement about that so okay I, so yeah. yes go ahead miss pat want to say uh deb can you talk now Deb, can you talk? Oh, no. Well, oh. let me try. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. All right, it's sitting in unstable, so I don't know. You're not going to be able to hear me. We're hearing you. You are? Okay. Yes. Well, the question that I uh, posed to Ms. Pat was um, the committee that, that chose us, uh, why couldn't they be the same committee for Rob as well as CSSJC? Because they were a very great committee. Obviously, they brought us all together. Yes. So why couldn't we have them be the ones to select? I mean, I think at this point for the beginning of it, that's fine. But I'm also thinking about long term and when things change and people and new members come in. And so it's not just now that we have to worry about. I mean, literally, we could Paul's contract is up in two to three years, I believe. And so if he doesn't renew it, then we have a new town manager. And then who knows how he's going to inter interpret. I never say that word. Understand or play off of things so I'm just saying that make sure that things are strictly clear and in writing so that there's no mistake down the road and also you know you know what if some of them are unavailable you need to have a backup person on that inter for those interview committees it is this almost the same people who interviewed you guys that interviewed reparations but there's no saying how that works out or plays out five years from now or three years from now so Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Mr. Vernon Jones? I would totally support using the same committee that picked us. It's not perfect, but in the document uh, that has the charge of the new committee, it says selection committee should be comprised of diverse residents who have social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion experience should be appointed by the town manager to assist in selecting the CSSJC members. So that's what's in writing now. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? So you guys know, um, I mean, it will be our co-chair that will be presenting on Monday. But for all of us to know, for people who didn't attend the uh, replacement committee charge presentation, last time, Monday Joe had questioned why by, uh, BIPOC select committee should be created in the first place to interview. She questioned it. So there might be you know, some follow-up questions from town council on that, on that uh, replacement group. 
So it, it was a very um, stressful but productive meeting. Can you we just there. repeat what you said about Mandy Jo questioned what? She questioned uh, BIPOC selection committee for CSJ, Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. But yeah, basically what we're discussing now, Mandy Jo is against it. So, you know, just, you know, to set the record straight. She, he thinks that there's already a standing committee that does that, that interviews candidates. Right. And why, you know, create another one? She questioned that, yes. There's no standing committee that does that. He that has... interviews new members. You know, for different committees. So what happens is there is a resident advisory committee and yeah, it yes. has three members, but only one of those members sits on each interview. So people don't interview with the whole entire rack. It's just one individual because at each committee interview is the chair of the committee, the staff liaison, Paul, and then one member from RAC. I did not know that. Okay. I, I suppose that's what she's referring to. Uh, she she was referring to that it's already a system in place. Why do we need to create a new one? And your point is well taken, uh, Jen. Like, you know, we're doing it now, but we need to make sure that we have something inviting five years to come. Who knows who the next town manager will be 20 years to come so that there'll be no question about selection of this, you know, this replacement group and Rob in the future, so. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying it, it's going to be critical for us to follow what we had put in there, that it be diverse um, people with the social justice, diversity, inclusion, um, lived experience, uh, experience to be on the, the selection committee. I mean, that's going to be key. So we can't like go off that. And it's already in writing. Uh, and, and like we said, we already have a formula that worked really well for our group. Let's use the same formula, but that formula can be continued, especially with all the written work that we have that basically communicates that. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Okay, so um, would you all want us to just leave the document as is, or would you all want Brianna and I to discuss this also with the town manager tomorrow? Discuss what? The, um, our thoughts regarding the selection committee. Like, how do you want, how do you all want to address this? I'm hoping when I apply that BIPOC folks interview me, like we did when we came on to CSWG, is what I'm hoping. And so do you think that the way we have it indicated in the charge is enough to express that or would you like yes. for us? Okay, yes, I think so. thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Well, I think, I mean, why don't you all just suggest, you know, having that group and then if that group, uh, if some of the members of that group are, is not available, the ones that chose us to, to make sure that they get replaced with other BIPOC people that have the experience that we're looking for. I think, you know, I think we want to be as direct as possible with the town manager, because I think if we give him any wiggle room, he'll go the other way, you know, so let's just be specific, direct, since you all are talking to him, just suggested, hey, we want the same group that was in place when uh, the, the selection committee that selected our group CSWG and if the, some of the, those members are going to be missing then replace it with the language that we put in for this new selection committee for the selection committee for this new group be very specific okay thank you Ms. Ferreira Mr. Vernon Jones I also just looked at our proposal for the resident oversight board and it specifically says the town manager shall, shall select a BIPOC majority committee to screen and recommend nominees for the resident oversight board. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So I think we were pretty clear in our writing, our intentions in our, um, in our descriptions However, Brianna and I can make that suggestion to the town manager tomorrow, just so that he has that. But I think that we did make that indication in both cases. So I think that that is good. And is that something that everyone is okay with in terms of moving forward on that? 
And yeah, so does everybody in this group know about what Monday Joe state stated about uh, her concern and objection on majority BIPOC um, standing committee? She had problem with that. Did we not so give an update to the group? Huh? Uh, yes. Did we not give an update to the group after we presented? I just can't no, remember. We have not, no. no. Yes, you Do you did. mind giving an update, Alicia? Um, I, I remember hearing it in this meeting, in one of these meetings. No, when the, I brought it up and then there was a um, lip, um, lip presentation and I tabled it for today. Okay. Oh, yes, I think you're right. I think we just did have a brief conversation. I wasn't sure if you all addressed it again because I wasn't able to attend the full duration of the meeting. Um, and to be completely honest, my recollection of that yeah. meeting is not super strong, but I can give a brief overview. And if you all fill in for yeah. clarity, um, we were able to... Oh, oh. can you all hear me here? You're just oh, short you want to say it? Yeah, I can summarize it. Um, yeah. I thought the meeting was definitely stressful. I felt like we were able to tell the town councilors why it was so important um, to have stipends, but I do feel like there was confusion around why majority BIPOC. And the comments that Mandy Joe made were very divisive and felt awful, to be honest. I didn't even know how to respond in the moment. Um, she had made a comment about 70% of the town being white. She had made a comment about, well, what about Asian Americans in town? Um, I'm just trying to think what else. Yeah. It, it, it just like, it wasn't good. It was a lot at once. And then after those comments had been made, um, another town counselor had made a comment that she was courageous for asking us that and courageous for standing up and making that comment in the first place, which felt really offensive. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else. Wait, I'm and then so sorry. I responded, Can... And then I responded back and I stated uh, for Mandy Joe to stop uh, dividing BIPOC community, trying to put Black people against Asian people. And I also asked her if she could tell me any, you know, um, committees that are, you know, I asked her at the meeting that so many committees in this town are made up of white folks. So give me an example of another committee that is super majority uh, black folks. And she pointed out to a school committee, I believe, or something like that, which wasn't super majority in the first place. I didn't know what she was talking about. So that caused some eyebrow for people who listen to it on YouTube. And I got a lot of um, personal emails and text messages from people. And some groups decided to post it, Sunrise and uh, the Fund for, you know, um, and I think it was also on MS Indie, Indie newsletter as well. And yeah. So I don't know what we're going to face on Monday, but um, I felt that we needed to address this at, that, at this meeting about obstacles that we encounter. I believe, um, yeah, but anyway. I think, um, thank you, Ms. I think the, the last thing that I wanted to say too about the meeting that kind of like threw me off, I could be wrong, but I swore that she had quoted um, something from a DEI training that she had done, which felt so harmful because Ms. Pat, myself and Alicia were there to explain and talk about the successor group and for her to just dismiss our lived experience, why we're saying that and say, well, oh, in a DEI training, it, it was awful. And also um, now they talk, um, they also, they're not very uh, welcoming to the idea of stipend. And I basically told them, like, it has to happen if you want to recruit, you know, BIPOC folks. And uh, some of them were feeling, you know, it shouldn't happen or just, you know, 
you know, make, so there was no money decided. The town manager would decide what the stipend was going to be. It's all, you know, one obstacle or the other. We bring up something, you know, they question it, they question, they don't want it to, to move forward. But at the end, I thought um, it was still pro productive, even, even though it was stressful. We got something out of it. Thank you, Ms. Pat. And I did just also want to add, in addition to everything that Brianna and Ms. Pat said, it was a tough meeting. Um, I did also recall that uh, Mandy Jo made a comment in regards to why we would be invest, why would we be creating a committee that would be investing in the safety of only Black residents? Yes, yes. That was her actual specific comment. Yes. And so I just, it's hard because not only did we never refer to only Black residents, we consistently referred to BIPOC. But to me, it is just a big, bigger signal of the anti-Black racist environment that exists here in Amherst, because I don't, I think this is a genuine question that people have that live here, that some of the white people have that live here. Um, and so I think that in our report and in addressing the fact that uh, our recommendations not going in the library, that it's really important to address the culture that exists here in Amherst, because I think that that's where that comment really stems from. Lack um, of education. Yeah. And so I, I also do see Ms. Ferrer with her hand up. So I want to give her some time to talk. Yeah, I don't want to belabor the point, but it just, again, it's just so disappointing, right? That after all this, Mandy Joe and and then, you know, the other uh, town council member saying, oh, you're so brave to bring it up. <laughs> it's just, you know, showcasing again that they're still at the same place, right? And that we have to keep fighting, that we have to keep bringing these things up because, you know, the, this divisive tactic, this, you know, the whiteness that's in this town, you know, that keeps on, you know, just doing the same thing after like almost a year of us, right? <laughs> talking about this issue and how important it is and this is what they get out of it and they just see what they want to see this narrow view and they don't see the whole picture that what we're talking about is making sure that everyone is part of this community but making sure that BIPOC who has always been marginalized and set aside has the voice in this community and them not understanding this is just really frustrating but it, it is good to hear because you know, Alicia, you and Brianna are going to be presenting on Monday and for us too, that are going to be there to support you. We need to be ready. We need to be ready yeah. to have these conversations and bring up these points because, you know, this is why we're here. We're here to make sure that this does not get lost. Even if they don't want to hear it, even if they keep on, you know, turning a blind eye and not and shutting off their, their ear, ears, we're going to do it and we're going to hopefully have the support of the community so that we can keep pushing these issues forward. Well said. That's the reason why I brought it up tonight. Thank you all for weighing in. It's 8.15. We should be wrapping up very quickly. I don't know if every, anybody else have heard this, but I've heard people make comment about, oh, the town council accomplished something. And that accomplishment was that they paid us stipend. I didn't even know how to respond. How do you respond to that? The accomplishment of the town council is giving CSWG stipend. They themselves are getting stipend too. It wasn't an issue. School committee members get stipend and they said, oh, that is a movement. You know, they're doing something, you know, for BIPOC, they paid us stipend. I, 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 I didn't even respond. How do you respond to that? <laughs> I feel like they paid us 50 cents an hour for every hour of work we did. <laughs> like, wow, thanks. Like we, we, all of our meetings go over, look at 8, 12 and we're still all here. Oh, every, I was every like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? They paid us stipend, we should be happy. <laughs> this was volunteer work. I'd do it again, but <laughs> geez. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. We should put that in our book. <laughs> <laughs> really thank you all thank you miss pat uh mr vernon jones did you have anything you wanted to add no i just I mean, okay you know. <laughs>
Um, so Nobody the last, your head, you know? <laughs> the last agenda item that we have was just, um, we've already actually touched on it. And so I just wanted to notify you all that the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee um, is live and that we want to continue to spread the word. And so please help spread the word through your networks. Anyone you may know, ask them to continue to spread the word. Um, and so that was our last agenda item. Are there any upcoming, oh, uh, Ms. Moiston, you are oh, muted. Yeah. I'm not aware who LSA Amherst is, but I didn't know if you wanted to take a last minute oh, public been. comment, but I, I don't know who that is. So that always, I, you know. Okay. Do you want me to let them in? Oh yeah, sorry. I thought you were just letting them in. I Can I have one, one comment beforehand? Yes, um, Deborah. Yeah, I just wanted to say in terms of the CS, um, CSSJC is just, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, and I know Ms. Pat already brought it up in terms of like the time commitment, because for me, I am, you know, obviously seriously thinking of applying, but I wouldn't be able to do you no know, more weekly meetings and things like that. So that needs to be something that needs to be taken very seriously, because that's the other thing, right? In order for BIPOC people to be able to take part in these committees, it's kind of like, you know, we have you know, real life stuff that goes on like everybody else, but we have other things that goes beyond what usual people have. And so, I, uh, you know, I want us to, to be able, like I wanna share it with BIPOC members for them to apply, but I also don't want them to think that it's gonna be a weekly thing like we were doing, you know, because this is a standing committee. I don't even think there should be a reason for that. So it needs to be something that's manageable so that there will be, good representation and not like obviously this mad kind of timeline we were on, which I understand because we were a working group, but it doesn't have to be the same way for the CSS JC. Just one, one more thing before the person comes in very quickly, um, FYI, everyone, the town council did request that the new standing committee show, this is something they requested that that should be annual report of the work, which I think is a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Pat, and thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, I think we have the LSA Amherst here. So the LSA Amherst is actually, sorry, it's, it's Ash Hartwell. Oh. I just, oh. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, I, I, I just, you know, one of your admirers and supporters, and on Saturday, we're really going to talk it up with we hope a fairly big group to come on Monday to hear your presentation and support your work. But I did want to say, I thought it was brilliant. The um, text that you have in your uh, report on the uh, uh, Resident Oversight Board about why uh, BIPOC Resident um, Oversight Board needs to be a majority uh, BIPOC and, that, um, and also the argument for the stipends. And I think that covers all the committees that you were are working on that argument is very clear and very strong, and uh, so I, I think that is the pushback against those who um, are, are are questioning it, um, and and I, I thought it was just really well said. So I, I wanted to just congratulate you guys for that and for everything. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good night. Thank you. Good You're night. over time. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any upcoming events that anyone would like to report? No, okay. I, I, I'm just going to miss this group. Like I'm having very, um, I mean, it's hitting on me like, oh, wow. You guys have become like, like an extended family to me. Like something I look forward to every week and it's going to end. I have to find another thing to do with my Thursday evenings. <laughs> the Thursday <laughs> night family. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to, since, well, I'll save it for next week. We have reflection there. Never mind. <laughs> Am Pat I going to make us cry? Are you going to make I us know, cry next I week, know. Pat? Bring your tissues. Bring your, your, your tissues next week. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Pat. Miss yeah. Ferreira. Um, I just wanted to ask, Ms. Moisten, can you just send the link for um, 
the meeting on Monday to us because that would make it a lot easier for me to then be able to share it with people. So I guess is there a different link for no, it'd probably be the same, right? For us and then the they link, bring us in, right? The link that's on the agenda and um before I leave, I can post it on your website is the same one that will be um, used for the meeting. I mean, it, yeah. I just used their link. It's Yeah, no, I know. But if you could just mm -hmm. like, could you just send it to us though too? Because then that would make it easier for me to change it over to like me sending it out to all my groups and the people I'm going to be sending it out to. If you wouldn't mind. Okay. I see your, okay. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer, and thank you, Ms. Moyston. Um, okay, and so we did talk about the next meeting date. We will meet next week, and at that meeting, we can talk about um, a final get-together or ceremony. Are there any other topics not anticipated within 24 hours of this meeting that anyone would like to talk about now? Okay, and so with all of our business being complete, I am calling this meeting adjourned. Yay. At what time? Everyone. Oh, at 819. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Bye, Bye everybody.